On IMDb, RDH CEO says Taxi Driver is a classic Scorsese De Niro film. Those who did not understand this film and gave it a poor rating are likely the same people, in air quotes, who raved over the Joker or Blade Runner 2049. If you cannot comprehend this plot, you should most likely take up another hobby or just stick to watching Pokemon movies. Real films do not hold your hand like a child and walk you to the restroom. That's it? Yeah. Dude's, uh, this guy's on some sort of a high horse. Yeah. Nay. Somebody should drug test that horse. <laughs> Hello, hello, and welcome to the Roy's Review Podcast. I'm Rob. You talking to me? I was talking to the audience. Hey. The listeners. I'm Andy. I was trying to do a thing. It didn't. I know. I'm, a- I'm Andy. I was ruining your thing. It was already it was already ruined. That's fair. Yeah. And we're back once again in Martin Scores Timber. And we're doing Taxi Driver from the year of our Megazord 1976. Wow, have you seen this movie before? I had not, and I had to burp as I said the year. That's why I said it's so weird. Robbie. I know. But like a gentleman, I did not burp on the podcast. That's good. Like a gentleman. I also had not seen this movie. Okay. Well, bye, everybody. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, shit. This shit is smooth, baby. Yeah, no, um, so we, neither of us watch this, even for this podcast? Yeah, we're just going to guess. Yeah, um, I'm going to guess that this movie is weird and slow. I'm going to guess that this movie is real, real edgelord shit. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> Andy, how are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Did I ask how you how you're doing already? No, you didn't. I appreciate okay, it. Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. So... I don't know. I guess we'll get into the movie later because we already said this movie came out in the year of our Zord, 1976. Hmm. That uh, sounds like a pretty big year for movies there. Right? Ooh, it does because it had a previous episode, Rocky. Rocky. And hey, Bowie yeah, man. I could, yeah, man. Go box, man. Yeah, and, and also, the, also, there's a squirrel. <laughs> Where's that? Which one's Rocky? Which one's Bo? Rocky is a uh, hey Rocky. Rocky's uh, so Rocky's the squirrel. No, so yeah. also there's a moose. Hey Bullwinkle, here's something we think you'll really like. Because then it's hey Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Pretty good. That's pretty Thanks. solid. Yeah, I, this is what I worked on as a kid, which is why I didn't have many friends because I grew up in the '90s. Mm. You know, Robert De Niro was in the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. Was he really? Yes, he was. My word. Pretty wacky, huh? But we also have Network. The Social Network? Nope. It looks like Robert Duvall is in that. Never seen it. We had a bu- we had a movie about a bunch of sexual predators called All the President's Men. <laughs> Excellent. Thank Excellent, you. Excellent, Robbie. Uh, we got Carrie. You ever see Carrie? Oh. Uh, no, I had not. That's good. The boy in the plastic bubble. Hmm. It's about a fully formed semen inside the condom. Very good. Yeah, a semen, not a sperm. No, a just semen. a man, a man of the sea. <laughs> yep. Logan. I think Ron. women and semen don't mix. The cheerleaders collection: Revenge of the Cheerleaders. And it's a woman with a banana up to her mouth. Andy, I gotta go to the bathroom. All right. Hope he's shitting or pissing. Because masturbation's a sin. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) King Kong. You wanna see my King Dong? No. Okay. Black Heat. 
You want to see my black heat? Yes. I, just, I painted it black. When I when I was a kid, I had a baseball bat. It was called Black Magic. That was like the name from the company. It was like Easton Bat, Black Magic. And I was not a good hitter, so there was no magic in that bat. <laughs> if I paint my genitals black, is that is that like blackface? Is that Am I racist? I don't know how to answer that, my guy. No. Yeah. I did on. see I did see a meme, a funny a meme. If you don't know, it was a funny thing on the internet. Dank May May. Yeah, dank, a, a, yes, exactly. It was actually a video or like a reel or a TikTok or whatever, and the guy was like sending out wiener pics, but he was like asking his black friend to send him pics so he could send it out. He's like, "Hey man, is that blackface?" <laughs> <laughs> oh, the movie Silver Street. About someone who's got a streak of gray in their hair. Okay. That's not what okay. it's about, my guy. So yeah. Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. How about Freaky Friday? Also Jodie Foster. I've never seen it. How about Nickelodeon? Nick, 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 Nickelodeon. Yay. Yeah. The outlaw Josie Wales. Starring Clint Eastwood. Hot more potato, like, hot potato. Hey. More like Clint West Iron. Very good. That was an excellent Thank joke. You. you know, we can Thank just end you. the show. We're not we're not topping that. Well, how about how about this? Okay. Death collector. Oh. That's okay. More like I got I got nothing. I got nothing. This was, uh, I don't know any of these. You don't know Rocky. I know Rocky. I know, uh, all right. Clint Eastwood, the Enforcer. Is that Dirty Harry? I have no idea. Okay, The Omen. I know that one. Return of the Kung Fu Dragon. It was like a horse in this poster. That's not a dragon. Did you say Brotherhood of Death already? You said something of death. There's Brotherhood of Death. And the tagline is, when these brothers stick it to you, it's fatal. (laughs) All right. Well. In other words, movies came out. Yeah. Movies we're not very, uh, you know, familiar with. All right. You want to talk about Taxi Driver? Sure. The drive, the cabbie, the crabby cabbie. The crabby cabbie. I do like the opening title sequence because it's very intense with the big swell and some light jazz. I like it. Oh, the score is fucking great yeah. in this. That's yeah. the best part of this movie. <laughs> oh, Robbie didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, let's get into it. I didn't care for this very much. I think this movie is could so easily be misread as like, oh, this guy's great. And... Yeah. uh I think we all know he's not great, right? Like, like this guy sucks. Well, it's great because, well, not the movie. So he goes, I'm going to jump around. I don't care. He goes and he sees this 12 year old hooker, much like you. And so. Wow, you really got me. Yeah. Ba zing. And so he goes and sees this 12 year old hooker and he's like, I'm, I'm helping you out. I'm coming to help you out. And then every guy saw that was like, that's going to be my excuse not to catch a predator. Yeah. Because yeah. you ever watched to catch a predator, every other guy's like, I was just coming to help her. Yeah. I was just hoping she was okay. I sent her a picture of my wiener. Yes. I did that. A lot of this seems like it's like just edgy for edgy's sake. Like some real edgelord shit, like I said before. Yeah. I did like how in the beginning when he's like applying to the taxi place mm-hmm. and the guy's like, the guy just asks him. He's like physical. He's like, yeah, I'm good. He's like, okay, good. Yeah, like perfect. no paperwork. <laughs> That's the sense That's the, these yeah, baby. Absolutely. I do like he's like anytime, anywhere. Yeah. De Niro is good in this. Oh, he's great. Oh, surprise, surprise. De Niro's good in something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he that's the thing. De Niro's greatness. Jody Foster is excellent for a 12-year-old. Yeah. She's I think really everybody, good in this. all the performances are great. It's just, this is such a, I, I don't know. He goes to a peep show at like 8 a.m. 
Well, he brings he brings a date to a porno. Yeah, he does. I said, I didn't know you wouldn't like it. I yeah. didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> so what do you mean you didn't know? You can't just bring her to a fucking porno on the second date. What are you doing, my dude? They got a cup of coffee, and then was like, and then he was like, I know, I know, I know. This checks in too. Yeah. Well, not only like as they're on their way in, she's like, "This is a porn," and he's like, "Nah, nah, it's cool." Yeah. And like she's clearly uncomfortable with the very idea of it so you're still gonna go through with the like the dude just he's just fucked like in the head and i think the movie like at first the movie's like hey sympathize with this guy and then he does some creep shit and then like as it goes on you're like at least me i was like i don't i don't like i don't like this guy i don't like it i don't like any of this This it became instantly hard to root for him when he was just staring at sybil shepherd and albert brooks through the window yeah and like even on the first date he's like i don't like that guy i don't like that guy you're with i don't i don't like him yeah and she's like he makes it very clear he doesn't yeah and she's like you know you're unlike anyone i've ever met that you should get out of there lady yeah (laughs) kind of what are you why are you giving him a second chance? Like, <laughs> you know what is what had me laughing is when he first goes to that peep show at like eight o'clock in the morning. When he's trying to flirt with the lady at the counter, you hear the moans from the film behind it. Yeah, it's like he's like talking, like, "Where are you? What's your name?" And she's and he's like, oh. he's like, "Come on, what's your name? When's your birthday?" Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is weird, but I'm uncomfortable. She was very dismissive. Yes. And right. Of course she so. is. She probably gets that all the time. Yeah. These guys are Pee Wee Hermiting. <laughs> and like he falls in love with Sybil Shepherd. He's like, I saw her walk by and I immediately was in love. So I stood outside her place of business. Yeah. And stared. Yep. Very, very uh Artsy fartsy edge lord shit. Yeah. Not well, into like, it. And then when Albert Brooks approaches him, he fucking speeds off. Yeah. Cool. Well, you see him like gaining confidence throughout this movie, but like confidence, it's like misguided. And, yeah. Cause like he finally works up the courage to talk to her. And then like he finally works up the courage to confront her after she left. And then after that, it's like he's just like, I'm, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna buy a bunch of guns and yeah, you know. Well, the guy does earlier. He asks him if he has a gun because I'm gonna be honest. In that time, if you're driving a cab in New York City in the 70s, yeah, especially at night, you carry that gun with you, my guy. Yeah, yeah. So like, I don't, I ain't gonna shit on the guy if he bought himself a handgun. But this dude bought himself a fucking arsenal. Yeah. (laughs) I did like the contraption he made for himself that he could just shoot it out of his like out of his uh, sleeve. Yeah. I was like, hey, man, it's pretty clear you're planning some bad shit if you have a hidden gun in your arm. Yeah. I don't know. I did like actual research for this just because at the end of the movie, I was like, what? Oh, dude, I didn't do research, but I thought the same thing. (laughs) Because, like, it happens. The violence happens. Yes. I thought he died on that couch. He's in a coma. Yes. And then he's, like, fine at the end. He's, like, driving around. Well, like, I'm assuming he's dreaming that. That's what because I thought, too. What's her name? Betsy. Or, is that her name, Betsy? Yeah. She's in, she's in the back. and she's Betsy like, Ross. That's it. <laughs> I forget what she says. But he's like, ah, it's you know whatever and then yeah she like apologizes roll. to him or some shit yeah and he's like hey yeah i'm a hero now so it's whatever yeah and it's like i think i think that's him dreaming i think but i don't i don't know the i thought the end was the was the most uh confusing well what was interesting is so just watching this you could tell what joker was trying to be another movie i did not care for very much same but at the end of this movie, you get the like letter written by Iris's parents. That's like, yeah. thank you. Or like, and you see the news article and people are calling him a hero. Yeah. And I think it does. This movie does that a lot better than Joker does 
because in this instance, you can understand why there are people who'd go, oh, this guy is a hero because he saved our daughter from being a child prostitute. Right. Instead so, of like shooting a talk show host in the face. On yeah, TV. exactly. And then yeah. just starting a riot in the, in the streets. Yeah. Like, because at its core, if you told me this movie is about a guy freeing a child prostitute. Like, all right. Oh, oh, I, that's a guy I can root for. Oh, he has to yeah. kill a guy in it. I can understand. But like how we get there is way off. Yeah, yeah. And that's what kind of muddies the whole thing. But here's a quote I have from Marty Scorsese. Oh, here we go. Reedy Andy. <laughs> that's what that's the best you got. <laughs> Reedy Andy. All right. Oh, uh, you said, know, he's stalling because he can't actually read. All right. You caught me. Illiterate Andy. A -A. Illiterate. <laughs> illiterate Andy. A illiterate. Yeah, because it's alliteration. Okay. It went from really stupid to, to like, oh, okay. To even more dumb. Hey. Yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, he had an interview with Roger Ebert. And he called this his feminist film because it takes macho to its logical conclusion the better man is the man who can kill you this movie shows that that kind of thinking uh shows the kinds of problems some men have bouncing back and forth between their perception of women as goddesses and whores that is a fair you know what that last line is a great way of of thinking of how men look at women. I don't think this film got that across very well. Maybe in the beginning, but then like, well, I guess he's in a way, I guess he's worshiping Jodie Foster in a way. Yeah, I, I guess. I, I mean, he I'm was definitely going to fuck her until he found out she was 12. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, there's also really strong allusions to him being like a racist. Big uh, it's the 70s in New York City. That's what you're going to get, baby. Yeah, but like Marty Scorsese is not a racist. I, I think y you're right. I don't think Marty Scorsese is trying to tell us that this is a good guy. I, I don't think that that's what he's saying. No, that's fair. But remember, Marty Scorsese also gave himself a role in this film where, he's where he the drops end the end bomb. Yeah, yes, that's true. So like, all right, Tarantino, your move. Yeah. Uh <laughs> I mean, Wait, I, that's a I weird kinda, scene. Let's go ahead. I kind of gravitated toward what he said when he says, this takes macho to its logical conclusion. Like, I, I get that I see in the movie where he's like, I'll save everyone because I'm so tough, but like, you're really just murdering people. But know? again, if you make this movie, where like the people he because the only people he murders in this film are the two guys who are involved in child prostitution. Yeah, yeah. Who so like, it. yeah. So like, I can't really say like, oh, he killed people because he, he's a bad guy because he killed people because the people he killed deserved it. Right. But the whole point, like, of how we're getting here, he's stalking this woman for yeah. some reason. And then all of a sudden they drop that. It's almost like there's two, there's two distinct halves here. Like one with Sybil Shepherd and one with Jodie Foster. Yeah. And then like he's really super creepy when it comes to Sybil Shepherd. And then the shit with Jodie Foster, you can root for him, but it's like, but what's this weird shit you're doing with Sybil Shepherd? Yeah. I think you were you mentioned when uh, Marty Scorsese's scene. Yeah, I think that that is a turning point for Travis because he sees like, oh, uh, this dude is also on the absolute edge. Yes, and he's like gonna go through with it. He's like, I can, I could do that. I can go through it. Like you could just act on these things. Where that's true. You know, I feel like because after that, that's where he goes and buys the gun. Guns, I should say. Yeah, he buys himself a fucking load of guns, baby. Yes, he does. From Easy Andy. <laughs> that's the guy's name. Is it? Yeah, that's what they that's introduced what they, him as. That's what they called me in high school. I remember, baby. Yeah. 
<laughs> Easy Andy refers to every single gun. He goes, that's a nice little gun. <laughs> every single yeah, you know, it's yeah. a nice, nice little gun. And then he does say, like, when he when he's like, I want to get that 44 Magnum. He's like, well, you'd be a fool to fucking walk around with that. So yeah. without yeah. this. Harness. Yeah, without this. Yeah. <laughs> what a salesman. I did like how. Um, what's his name? Albert. The guy Albert Brooks is playing. Yeah. He's oh, like, yeah. Uh, whatever his name is, Tom, I think. Yeah. He, he's like, uh, you see that taxi driver staring at us? And she's like, what taxi driver? And then the camera turns. Yeah, and it's just that's the literally the only thing you could see in that window. Like, what did you fucking what taxi driver? Like the one that's in the taxi, lady. Open your eyeball. Uh, after Civil Shepherd gets all mad about, understandably so, about the dirty movie, movie he calls her cold and distant. Yeah, what, what do like, you expect? What do you, dude? Yeah, uh, that that's that's where it's like because like okay if he's because he's clearly been through some shit he was in the Marines like all this stuff and you know he's, he's driving a fucking taxi at night in New York City the dude's been through it okay so like okay he's staring at the girl it's weird but it's like oh okay he's just not well adjusted he doesn't know but then. He fucks up and then he he like spam calls or he just keeps going. And it's just like I can't root for you anymore, dude. And yeah. I'm out. I'm out. I gave you a chance. But like again, I don't think that's I don't think Marty wants you to root for him. I don't it's 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 real artsy fartsy and big brain, I think. And I just yeah. I'm not I'm not there for it, you know. I'm not big brain. I'm a child. Yeah. I'm exactly yeah. what that reviewer said is I'm a child. Although I was given a big nervous laugh when Marty Scorsese said the incredible line, you ever see what a 44 Magnum can do to a woman's pussy? Yeah. Yeah. That was. Yeah. Have you? No. Have you? <laughs> uh, I got some um, Holden Caulfield vibes, you know? Yes. Catcher that's catcher in the rye. Yeah. Preserver of innocence. Yeah, okay. Like when it comes to Jodie Foster, that's like he's doing like a. Not I know it's right. Was not for you. preserved. No, it was not. No. But he's like, I know what's right for you. I can help you. But like, can you? Because you can't even help yourself, my guy. You're 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 cracked. Yeah. You know, it's just like I. At the end of it, I feel bad for her, obviously because of her situation, but also like. Your savior. Is a fucking nutbag, you know? Like yeah. Because when he's saving her, she's got in her mind, she's got to be going, what's he going to do to me? Right. Like, okay, as bad as it is that she had to suck that one guy's dick, like, you have no idea what this guy's about to do to your corpse. Yeah, yeah. No, this guy, this guy is not, this guy's not okay. Um, hey, you know what I don't believe? What's that? That a presidential candidate would have ever gotten into a New York City cab. Not once, not no. once. Now, do you think? Never. Okay. Uh oh, he's drooling. But the the scene where he gets into his cab and he's like, "Hey, you're uh, you know, uh, what's his face?" And he's like, "I am." And then he he's like, "Hey, I I'd like to get you know what 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 would you want if I were elected or whatever he says he's like I need you to clean up the filth in this city this city's filled with scum and the the guy goes the candidate says uh I know what you mean now do you think he was just pandering to him or do you think he's like yeah I think it was Scorsese chickening out and making the political candidate be nothing yeah, because, like, we don't know. I think that was the point. I think it's supposed to be, hey, who? that's whoever you don't like. Yeah, but also, I got the sense that Travis genuinely did like him. I think he only liked him because Sybil Shepard was working for him. Because remember, he says, he's like, oh, I like him too. What do you, uh, I don't really know his policies. Yeah, but I, I thought he liked him because he actually listened to him. That's possible. 
because like, I don't think he was he actually listening. Out, I think I think it was more pandering than anything. That's what I that's and, what I was thinking. And in terms of character, I think it was pandering. But you never get any of his actual political views, and I think that was more of Scorsese being like, "That's not what this film's about." Yeah, like, yeah. hey, this is this is just a politician, a corrupt, greedy politician. Yeah, who well, somehow I, doesn't die at the end of the movie. Well, that here's my confusion: is like, cause I I got the sense he genuinely liked the candidate, and then at the end he's like, "I'm going to kill him." I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't get that. I think the candidate, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I th- Well, he doesn't even like, he cowards out of killing the candidate. Well, he cowards out because the Secret Service saw him. And he was like, oh, shit. I guess, but like you got that, cl- he got right up to their face and pull- started pulling his gun out. Yeah. Like at that point, dude, that's point of no return. The fact that he got away was incredible. Well, that's New York City in the 70s, baby. Well, the fact that they didn't immediately pull a gun on him and just put one in his back. As he turned around. Yeah, well, there was a crowd. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, at one point, he's practicing drawing two guns in the mirror like he's Arthur Morgan. We're going to go to Tahiti. We're going to become mango farmers, Arthur. Very nice. Thank you. But yeah, he's like practicing, like pulling us. Like, oh. Yeah. Pew, 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 pew. And then we get that, that infamous, you talking to me? Yeah. So uh, that's fine. Apparently, he ad libbed that. Oh, pretty cool. I think the makeup department does a really great job make uh, making De Niro look terrible. Yeah, like he looks like just disheveled and and like like a man who's not sleeping, which he is in this movie. Yes. Yeah. It that's yeah that definitely comes across. Oh, I forgot. He also shoots that robber in the bodega. He does. And again, that it's like another that's like a classic fucking oh good guy with a gun scenario, you know? I think that was more like, you know, now he's carrying around this gun. We're getting this robbery. I don't think it was even supposed to mean that in any way. But what is it? I don't get it. Cause I I don't think this movie's that smart. I, I don't think I think we're not supposed to be getting good guy with the gun vibes. I think it was more just like, okay, we need to see that this guy has a gun and is trigger happy because he goes down like he, this is his first thing he does. He buys this gun and now he's just walking around with it. Yeah. And well, this like, guy turns around, he sees his gun and he goes, ah, and just blasts his head. So, like, you don't think this movie's smart? You don't think it's like over our heads? You think it's, it's actually just artsy fartsy bullshit? Yeah, I think it's artsy fartsy bullshit more than anything. I think it's okay. well made, but it is not a movie for me. It's definitely well made. It's got some great like cinematography. Like I think and I read about how Marty Scorsese says this is his favorite uh scene in the in the movie. And I, I thought it was great too when when he he's calling, he's like power calling uh Betsy and he's like okay. starting to get mean. And as he's calling, the, the camera kind of like pans to the hallway, like the empty hallway, and it just stays there for a second while he's still calling. And I, I was like, that's some artsy fartsy shit. Yeah. It's like, like even the camera is like, I don't want to look at this. Look at this fucking guy. <laughs> no, I get that. But like, I mean, all the shots of when he's driving around New York, and first of all, the reflection of the lights in the windshield and stuff is incredible. Yeah. And then just the way they're shooting this gross and grimy 1970s New York. I love me some 70s gross New York. Yeah. And And Peter Boyle you got. You got Peter Boyle. Yeah. But I'm just talking about the way it's shot in it. Same. It just looks awesome. When we're getting these shots of him driving and like there's like a couple of quick cuts when we're looking. It just looks really nice. It's a really well shot movie. But yes, the great Peter Boyle is in as the wizard. Yeah, and like I like how he, like Travis goes to him for help. He's essentially like, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing some crazy shit. Like, you got any advice? Like, have you ever felt like this before? I need something. Yeah, because I'm losing my mind." And Peter Boyle's like, "Hey, uh, you know, you put one foot in front of the other, and uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what you're talking about, buddy. One day and, at a time, pal." Yeah, and he's like, "Okay, well, 
thanks for fucking nothing, dude. <laughs> and Peter Boyle's also like, well, what, I'm not a fucking therapist, my guy. Like, yeah. Uh, it. I like that scene just because that's that scene is mean something because like people with mental illness don't get what they need yeah well mel- mental illness isn't real andy so here he goes here he goes all right robbie <laughs> but uh it like these people they they're not getting the help they need and people like they'll go to someone for help it might not be the right person that person will just be like ah you Depression it sounds like you just fucking bummed out, brother. <laughs> it's like, nah, man, I need help. I need fucking help. And they're just kicked to the, like these people fall through the cracks in society. And I think that's this movie does a good job of showing that. It's just that I don't get I don't understand the actions and what they mean, because. It's I, I what I put together was at the end, he's seen as a hero and it's kind of like holding up a mirror to that kind of like edge lord culture. It's like, see, this is like you you if you're reported on in any way, you you're that's your legacy. Like you're now a part of culture, even if you're a fucking monster. Okay, but I don't even think edge lord was like a thing back then. Right. Like he's an incel. This is before incels, you know. Yeah. He's like the premier incel the prototype yeah and like you see posters of him uh, like with the mohawk and with the gun the, yeah. the handgun to his, like the bloody gun to his head i've seen that i didn't know it was from this people love this a little too much yeah and it's like this uh, this is not a hero this is not someone to look up to this isn't who you are yeah. Shut well the that's fuck the- up that's why, like, all of a sudden at the end of the movie, they introduce Harvey Keitel as this pimp. And, like, he's doing this weird slow dance with the 12-year-old. It's horrible. It goes on for way too long when he's, like, dancing with Jodie Foster. And I feel like, like, all right, we need to make, at least at the end when this guy shoots these guys, people be happy that it's not him getting shot. Yeah. Because... Like, yeah, Harvey Ke- Good. You killed Harvey Keitel, but I'm still not thrilled about this guy. Right. And I think uh, Joker saw that and they were like, let's just have Joaquin do a dance like yeah. every other scene. And we'll we'll just hold on that. For it's fucking like in five minutes, it's like Kyle Rittenhouse just because he killed a registered sex offender. It's like, right. yeah, OK, but he still went around just shooting people with his gun. Yeah. Like it's... if you leave your house with a gun, you're looking to kill something. Yeah. Like yeah. you're like that's it. If you leave your house with a gun, you're saying, "Oh man, I'm hoping to kill something today." Right. Whether yeah. it be a person or you're hunting, I don't know. It's it's also I also have in my, my notes. This is the scariest movie we've ever done for this podcast, and maybe that I've ever seen. Um. Okay. Just like when he walks up to the the Secret Service guy at first. Oh, guys, like you see your service, right? Yeah. And like that just creeped me out. I was like, ah, fucking this movie's gross. That's what it is. Yeah, like, it's absolutely disgusting. Like an icky, man. That that's I don't know. It's just like frightening because, again, I've seen those posters. Right. And I'm like, ah, fuck. Well, like, it's like we talked about on previous episodes. It's like, I'm the Joker. I'm yeah. Travis Bickle. I'm Travis Bickle. No one understands me. Yeah. I'm going to clean up the scum. Like, and, you and, are the scum, dude. Yeah. And I think that's the reason I didn't like this movie is because I've known the culture around it going in. And I'm watching it. I'm like, oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. No, fuck these people. But like, I even I went to like Reddit to see what kind of discussions are. And Ooh. like, people are. People are like talking like uh, like movie discussions, not like incel discussions, but like movie <sighs> discussions. And like, I don't, know, I got like he's a hero in the end, but he isn't a hero. Uh, like in real life, and like oh, so this movie's about John Lennon. <laughs> <laughs> I like it's it's like having him look like as a hero is intentionally like the spooky thing of this movie. Yeah. You know, 
like and we're lucky that he went for bad guys but like if he like got let out yeah, you know, who knows who he'd kill next, right? Right. Like, I don't know. It's this is either like really big brain or just shock value. I don't know. I do know that he shines his shoes before he goes out to kill a presidential candidate, and Sirhan Sirhan could never. I'm I'm lost on that. All right, so Sirhan Sirhan in 1968 shot and killed Robert Kennedy while he was running oh, okay. president. Okay. I was really proud of that joke. No, it's good. It's good now that you that you explained who Sirhan Sirhan is. De Niro shaves his head into a motok for no fucking reason at the end. Yeah, I think that's like he's finally, he's fucking going, he's just all the way. He's He's gone all the way. But he's like, ah, I've made myself more identifiable. Excellent. Yeah. Well, he's not a smart man. And no. I think they make it very clear that he's not a smart man. Like I agree. he took his for he took the girlfriend to a porno. Yeah, that's well, yeah. And uh, then he was upset that she was upset. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on, man, don't be an idiot. I did like that scene with the shootout when he fucking shoots the door guy's fingers off. Yeah, that all like I know that they they changed the contrast or the coloring to make this an r-rated movie because it was going to be nc-17 wow i can't believe it yeah and like so they you mean a 12 year old looking at a grown man going you looking for action yeah yeah well apparently it was just because of the violence at the end yeah well and so in the 70s you can get away with anything roman polanski (laughs) got him so like i kind of found that a little hard to follow Okay. I didn't know who was who in the shootout. I saw the guy got bla- it was the guy who chased him all the way up the stairs, the guy who he blasted the fingers off of. Okay, so the guy he blasted the fingers off of is the guy who's who okay, remember when he walks in and the guy's like, all right, it's 10 bucks for the room. Yeah. That's the guy whose fingers he blasts off. So is that the same guy who chased him all the way up the steps? Yes, yeah, it is. Because then he okay. gets in the room and then Kaitel shows up back and he shoots him again in the neck that's fucking awesome but he shoots him in the neck and he just turns around yeah and i was like "Ooh, that's pretty cool yeah. uh and then he fucking yo he lights the dude up that's in there with iris yes he does and they show his bloodied fucking corpse is like "Ooh, that's i mean you know me i love a good shootout and so i really enjoyed this last scene yeah, the, honestly, the violence is the least offensive thing in this movie. Yeah. Like, All the stuff leading up to it, I was going, I could really use someone getting shot in the head. Yeah, like for the for the love of God, someone throw a pie. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I don't know. This movie, it's it's just like icky, and I understand mentally ill people fall through the cracks. But like, they also, why we why we put what <laughs> what was that? But also, why we putting this this dude on our pedestal? You know. Yeah, but is that even what we're doing? That's the thing. It's just so artsy fartsy, edge lord horse shit. I don't know. I just... Hey, I have a theory. Sure, we're stupid. Okay, we're stupid. Or, hear me out. This movie is just not that good. That's also very, very possible. Yeah, maybe, maybe the message is muddled because it's just not that good. That's very, very possible. Yeah. Or we're dumb. Could be a combination. Could be a combination of the two. Send us an email at roygmail.com. Are we dumb? Or is this movie just not very good? Or send us a tweet. Are we dumb? Or is this movie just not that good? Or a thread. I don't even know if people are still doing that anymore already. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Are the we internet. dumb? Or is this movie just not very good? Like, I feel like it's definitely saying something. I just, it's just like kind of lost. Yeah. Real quick, thank you so much for listening. If you want to send us some feedback, send us an email at roidsreview at gmail.com. That's R-O-Y-D-S-R-E-V-U-E at gmail.com. You could also find our music on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your music by searching The Roids. That's R-O-Y-D-S. We have two albums and a Christmas song. Hope you like it. All right, we're going to jump into Letterbox now. And give a nice little review for Taxi Driver. I'm going to be honest. I want to give this two stars. That's what I was thinking, too. All right. Two stars. 
That's the official Roy's review review of Taxi Driver. Two stars, which we are in the minority on Letterboxd because that's got 4.2 stars on Letterboxd. I mean, like, is it a is it a good movie? I don't know. Is it a well-made film? Yes. Is it anything sure. I'd want to watch again? No. Right, right. And like Martin Scorsese? Scos- 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 yeah. Uh, he's he's excellent. Yeah, he's, he's great. Like you can't That's why we're doing that. this month, Scores Timber. Correct. Also, De Niro, exceptional. Yeah. Just, I wonder if he'll you know. come back in Scores Timber. Uh, yeah, almost actually, definitely. Yeah, yeah, it was like his muse for a while. Yeah. Like the band, band. muse. Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. Very good. Good. Very good. Very um, good. I do have three questions about this movie. Okay, let's hear them. I think I have I have one. All right, so you go first. Questions. How would you be able to eat at a porno theater? You got one free hand. Uh, I still don't think I'd be able to do it. Yeah, yeah. Can't imagine eating and cranking at the same time. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Yeah, no, no, I see. That's inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. Questions. Uh, my question is just like, hey, what's going on with the end? Is he, is he dead? Is he in a coma? Is he? I have no idea. Dream? Genuinely, I have no idea. Yeah, get that shit out of my face. Very good. Questions. So Marty wound up killing his wife in this, right? I'm assuming, unless he's just all talk. Yeah. Questions. And my third and final question is of much less importance. But what is up with her green glasses? Who's green glasses? Irises, Jodie Foster. At one point, they're like eating, and she's wearing those weird green like goggles slash glasses. Hmm. Didn't even notice. Well, you should have. Here's something I did notice during okay. the during that scene when they're in the diner. That sandwich that she makes with like jelly and sugar and butter, I think. And she just like puts it in her she's like it's it looks like the driest fucking thing anyone's ever done. <laughs> and I was you know, I was like, drink some water. <laughs> like like that scene was hard for me to watch because of how dry that sandwich was. I totally get that. Yeah. I have five triviers. I have four triviers. Oh, wow. Altogether, that's nine triviers. That's nine triviers. Did you know All that? Right. Yes, I can do math. Wow. How old is Travis Bickle at the start of the movie? 25, 26, 27, or 28? 26. Yeah, that's right. You're right. That's oh, absolutely my. right. Okay, what city worker strike was happening during the filming of this movie? Teachers, bus drivers, sanitation workers, or subway transit workers? Sanitation workers. Correct. Yes, Swinlow. Apparently, all the trash and filth in the city was for real. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's still there. Still is, isn't it? (laughs) What does De Niro have to clean off the back seat of the taxi every single night? Piss, shit, cum, or blood? Cum and blood. Um, it's actually cum every night, sometimes blood. Sometimes blood, yeah. When a woman has her period. I doubt that's what it is. Yeah. But it could be. I cum blood. Dude. Is my favorite Cannibal Corpse song. Okay, go to the hospital. Nice cover, that's, though. That's the title of the song. I get it. Go to the hospital. Okay. I go to the hospital. I just tell them that that's my favorite Cannibal Corpse song. They're like, sir, leave. You don't have to be here. <laughs> and then I come blood for real. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Who did Scorsese offer the role of Travis Bickle to? Al Pacino. DiCaprio. D- nice. Al Pacino. Dustin Hoffman. Sylvester Stallone or Jeff Bridges? Jeff Bridges. No. 
He was, however, uh, the studio's pick. But Scorsese did not offer him. Stallone. No, it was Dustin Hoffman. Oh. Dusty Hoffs. Yes, very good. Six shots. Six shots. Nice. <laughs> how Definitely. much? <laughs> how much do all the concessions cost that De Niro buys at the porno theater? One eighty-five, one ninety, one ninety-five, or two dollars. One eighty-five. That's correct. Holy shit! I wrote this movie. Incredible. I wish I did better because I don't understand it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Which two actresses applied for the role of Iris? Cloris Leachman, Carrie Fisher, Michelle Pfeiffer, Sally Field, or Diane Lane? Which two actresses? Okay, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes. Who was the one after her? Sally Field. Sally Field. No, Carrie Fisher. Doughboy tries to get Bickle to sell a piece of which actor's bathtub? Clark Gable, Jimmy Stewart, Cary Grant, Errol Flynn. Clark Gable. No. Shit. Errol Flynn. Yep. Oh, shit. Um, how many hours a day did Robert De Niro work as a cab driver in New York to prep for this role? 700. Hours a day, Robbie. 1,700. Okay. Eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours, or 15 hours? Eight hours. 15 hours, Robbie. My word. My word in heaven. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is my last question. Are you ready? Yes. Which coffee shop does Travis take Betsy to on their first date? Charles Coffee Shop, Tom's Coffee Shop, Chuck's Coffee... Oh, sorry. Chuck's Cafe, Carl's Cafe. Tom's Coffee Shop. No. Uh, Chuck's Cafe. No. I don't know. That. It's Charles Coffee Shop. Charles Coffee Shop. No. Damn it. It is. It is. I, I jest on your chest, baby boy. Whoa, yo, you got a song though, I Robbie? Do. I got a song. Yo, fucking flip a fucking pick or something. <laughs> Andy, call it. Uh, heads. It's tails. Fuck you. Damn it. God, I'll go first. Damn it. I'm going to go first this time. Okay. Everybody, I'm going. All right, I'm going to do it. My song's called Call Girls and Cabbies. Nice. And it's about the movie Taxi Driver. And it goes like this.
That was my song, Call Girls and Cabbies. I like that rock or roll. Rock and 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 even roll at times. Yes. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have really nothing to say about that one. Just a song about a cab driver. I and like the guitar solo. I liked it was a uh, real rock or roll. Thank you. Yeah, I um I did a, I was like, I want to do some fast paced punk rock, punk rock, punk rock. And um <laughs> you can probably tell I did this song, um, peek behind the curtain. We've recorded two episodes this week, sure and did. I did that song at the after doing the vocals for the other song I had written this week. Mm. And so that, are you looking at me? was the last thing I've done <laughs> this mm. like vocally. And I was just screaming it. And my voice was like, we're done. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. I heard but, that. But um, yeah, that's my song. Call girls and cabbies. I really was tempted to call it the crabby cabbie, but it's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I like your Tell song. me about your thong. Uh, my thong got stains. Is... Oh, of course, Robbie. It's in my uh, ass crack, and I don't wipe. Oh boy! <laughs> oh, you threw up. Um, my song is called "Alone" because there is a uh, you know running theme here. Is this dude's lonely as shit, and um, you know, a, a takeaway I kind of had at first was like, okay, loneliness. Uh, can drive people to do uh, some crazy shit, but like, you know, I still no excuse, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's called Alone, and uh, I, I went for real, real uh, 70s dad rock kind of feel on this one. Oh, I'm really hyped actually. Now I can't wait. All right, it's called uh, Alone. <laughs> Okay. No, I like that a lot. It sounds very Rolling Stones, that like uh like guitar part. Yeah, it's like uh I don't know, augmented like you augment the chord and then you go back to reality. I like it. Augmented yeah. reality. There you go. There you go. Yeah, just uh just about how he's this uh big time sad boy. Big time dummy sad boy who's like, ah, I'll save everybody by killing everybody. I'm an idiot. I'm gonna do Marita. Yeah. I'm better than everybody, even though I am I am actually the scum that I'm talking about. Scummy bums. Scummy Trav. That's what they called him. Nice. Travis Scumbag. Woo! 
Yeah. Well, I like that a lot, though. Good job. Wow, thanks. Um. So, uh, what are we doing next week for uh, sip scores s- scores timber? We're doing Gangs of New York. Wow. With Daniel Day Louis. Dangs of New York. Very good. Bangs of New York. She's like, I got a new haircut. A sex in, in the New City York episode. Yeah. How about um Fangs of New York? It's about vampires. How about Artie Langs of New York? Oh, that's now it's sad. Yeah, I guess I mean, a sad tale alive. about excess. Yeah. yeah. How about Wangs of New York? It's about my pee Nice. How about gangs of New Jersey? It's about the Sopranos. There you go. How about Kangs of New York? It's a it's about Kang. It's Marvel Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah. How about it's gotta be one more. Boomerangs of New York. That's good. That's good. Good eye. Oh. <laughs> nice. Good eye. Andy, where can they find our music? I'll tell you where. You go to Spotify, right? You, Spotify. Go, to, you go to Apple Apple Music. Uh, you go to uh, Deezer. And you, you type in the Roy's, R-O-Y-D-S, and, and you fucking, you got, you good? I'm doing ASMR. Oh, nice. I'm, I'm saying what you say, but I'm doing it ASMR like. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Do you not like it? Uh, it's Are you getting tangly? You're getting a little tangly, aren't you? No, no. no it's just throwing me off a little bit. Uh, you type in the Roids and you, you find two albums and a Christmas song, but then you go to uh, the Roids.bandcamp.com and you'll find the enormous amount of uh, um, podcast songs that we've written about movies. Yeah, this is episode number 70. Jesum Crawdad. That means Robbie and I have written 70 songs. Yeah, each. That's 140 songs. That's more than 140 100. songs you're getting on there. Yeah. Pretty oh, by the way, cool. we also plan on doing a bonus episode this month. Do we? Yeah, we've talked about this exclusively. Oh, that's right. Is, is it a surprise or are we, told, are we telling the people? Let's make it a surprise in case we wind up not doing it because we run out of time. Smart. Smart noise. Yeah, so I might cut that now that I've said that. Yeah. We might do a boner episode. Maybe. Where we just get rock hard. I'm rock hard every episode, right? Okay. Okay. You can find us on Instagram, on Twitter, on threads, on TikTok, at the Roids Band, and YouTube at the Roids Band. Find us on email, roidsreview at gmail.com, R O Y D S R E V U E at gmail.com. Like wow. and subscribe. Okay. Should I keep saying it like that? Sure. If you're listening on YouTube, comment below. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, we're tell doing you, gangs tell of your New- friends. Oh yeah, tell all your friends. Word of mouth is a big thing. Sure is. Yeah, thanks for listening. Gangs of New York next week. It's gonna be good because that's a long movie. We're getting into long territory. Yeah, well, all these you know fancy schmancy directors they always go, oh, I need five hours. Martin Scorsese has deserved, has earned it. Oh, the mo- most of them have. Almost yeah. all of them have, but like... And it's also, this movie's about Irish guys, so it's cool. Is it? I actually yeah. have no So idea. is The Departed. That I've seen. That's so is The Irishman. <laughs> that I haven't seen. We should have done this in March. Yeah. <laughs> we got... Oh, we next March, we should do all Irish movies, because that's the only important thing about March. All right, Saint Leprechaun, Patrick's Leprechaun Day. 2, Leprechaun 3. Leprechaun now I'm 4. mad. Now I'm mad. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're going to continue Scores Tamper with Gangs in New York next week. Bye. Bye.